Um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Reza. I'm one of the clinical lecturers and also a registrar in restorative dentistry at the School of Dentistry, University of Manchester. Now, this lecture uh, and uh, the couple of more lectures followed in the same series are pitched at the level of a junior examiner. And uh, within this series, I'm hoping to give you an overview of what a standard setting is. So by the end of the series, um, I'm expecting you guys to got a better understanding of why we essentially a standard set. Uh, I will go through a variety of most commonly and most famous uh, methods uh, which are being used in a standard setting and in particular I will have a little bit more uh, emphasis on the methods which are already being used here in Manchester. So now, before I get started, I would like to raise this question as of why do we a standard set? And generally, what do I mean by a standard setting? Now, let's imagine in an undergraduate examination scenario, you would like to set uh, a paper or an examination uh, just to make sure those uh, students who are competent are passing and going through and those who are incompetent are falling behind and are not able to uh, go ahead. Uh, so it might sound really easy in principle, however, in reality, it's quite difficult to make sure that we set the bar just at the right level. So it's not too high up and it's not too low down uh, and it's adjusted for the purpose. Uh, in other words, a standard setting is a mechanism uh, by which you will uh, calculate a pass mark for an examination or a paper to ensure the competent people are going through and the incompetent ones are staying behind. Um, so here, uh, General Dental Council has um, populated a publication called Preparing for Practice and in that document, they have described uh, a terminology called safe beginners. And what they're expecting dental schools to produce are qualified dentists who are sort of rounded professionals and they've got a variety of uh, expertise and capabilities as well as being competent. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the whole statement, but they would like somebody who is safe hands and is going to treat the patients in a safe environment. So as an examiner, it would become all of a sudden your responsibility to make sure that the people who you are allowing to go through in an examination are going to pass are going to become safe beginners and are going to become safe hands in future. Now, let's go back to an example in dental school. So in your own experience, you might have encountered students who are just fine, they're doing okay, and they're reasonable dentists. You can actually see them being uh, nice and safe uh, to go ahead and qualify and graduate. And there are some who are extremely bright, they're at honors or distinction level, and there are also students who you think that they're not doing actually so well. Uh, so these categories are quite easy to distinguish from. However, we do have another category which is called borderline and from now on in the rest of my lectures uh, you would notice that how much we are going to put our attention around the whole borderline candidates. Now this borderline candidate is a sort of a student who is just minimally competent so you can allow them to progress so they're not brilliant, they're not average, they're just fine, minimally competent, in order to make sure that we are complying with the General Dental Council's uh, guidelines and the safe beginners. So within this series, I will be going through um, a variety of methods which are used to a standard set, uh, a given examination scenario. And generally, uh, I will be um, dividing them into two groups, the absolute and the relative groups. Now, in the absolute methods, uh, they're also known as the criterion reference methods, uh, we would set a passer score. Uh, and the passer score is pretty much individualized 
uh, I will go through a lot more details about this in the next video. And in the relative methods, they're also called a norm reference. Rather than looking at individual candidates, we will be looking at a whole group of examinees. And then we set a pass mark for a whole group. And we will go through that in the second video. So bear with me, I will see you very soon.